Hello and welcome to Break Check, Rocket League Esports Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the North American Winter Split Regional Number One. It was also called the X Games Open. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is close qualification. Now, before I dive too deep into this, I think it's important to mention that in this fall to winter split break, we had a trade window. Teams are eligible to make one move in between each split with a maximum of two moves uh, throughout an entire season. So we saw many teams making a, making a move in this trade window, and I think that is exciting for this first regional. So let's Take a look at this close qual, and we'll cover some of these roster moves as we talk about these teams. So the first one that's really exciting is Rogue. We got a 3-0 performance. This is one of those teams that I was talking about picking up a new player. And you see we have a topic here later, new wave of talent. We have to talk about Aqua on this squad. I think this is going to be a new look for Rogue. I think we're going to see a much more dangerous, much more consistent Rogue throughout this winter split. It's no or it's no secret, excuse me, that in the fall, Rogue obviously struggled. They had some large shoes to fill after losing first killer at the end of RLCS X. And anyway, so they struggled in the fall split in the trade window, picked up Aqua, and we got a 3-0 performance here in the close quals of the first regional event in the winter split. We've also got Rebellion, and Rebellion is... A, to be honest, it's actually a kind of a similar situation to Rogue. Rebellion finished RLCS X as kind of that outskirts of the top five team. We had Rebellion in the offseason with a couple good results. And I think they had kind of solidified themselves in everyone's mind as that sixth or seventh place team. And then we saw some, some I don't even know what ha happened. We saw some stuff go down and Beast Mode ends up leaving the roster. And just like with Rogue, that's that's some big shoes to fill. That's a tough gap to fill. So um, Rebellion had a tough fall split as well. They end up grabbing Parth, who is a younger talent, 16 years old. They look really good in this close qual as well. So we want to make note of, of some of the teams that they beat here. Um, Vibrance qualifies. So, you know, Rogue's got a, a strong schedule there. And CLT, we know they've qualified a few times. Exit. Oxygen and Torrent, all three qualify for this event. So Shopify with an, a, a strong schedule here as well. So really, really impressive results from both of these teams. We look down at the next group of qualification uh, teams. It's going to be Torrent, Xset, and Vibrance walking through with a 3-1. And I think this is kind of where you expect these teams. I think it's very possible for these teams to end up at the top. Occasionally, they end up down here qualifying at the last chance with a 3-2. But this is kind of where you expect these, t these teams. They've been pretty consistent throughout. Pretty on par, in my opinion. Sonics, RBG, and Oxygen. Um, I think this is pretty on par for these teams. Though I will say, this Oxygen roster, I think, has become significantly stronger. And I don't expect to see them in round five of many more of these. I think they're going to continue to gain confidence and chemistry throughout this winter split. And I think they are going to be a mainstay in the regionals and probably even a top 10 style team. We'll look down here for just a moment at the teams that did not qualify. We've got E United, Accelerate, Prestige, Pioneers. Charlotte Phoenix, Manzana, Nefarious, and Buckos. And many of these teams, uh, everyone besides Buckos, Manzana, and I think Pioneer, well, actually Pioneers has not, and Prestige has not either. So uh, a few of these teams have not made it into the events at all, but they are pretty regular day three close qual uh, appearances. I, I wouldn't say that I'm surprised by any means uh, from any of these results. One team that I do want to highlight for just a moment is Manzana. This is kind of an exciting team. Luke, J. Russ, and Pollo. Pollo is... A young talent that just turned 15 recently. J. Russ is a previous RLCS player, and so is Luke. If this team ends up sticking together for a while and, and, and working on some of the working through some of the issues and whatnot that they may be coming across, I expect that team to be pretty threatening uh, moving forward. So after that, let's go ahead and jump into main event. Let's see what's going on over there. So the first thing we can do is we can look at the groups and see what we think about that. We'll talk about the format for a moment because I know that was a pretty big discussion. And then we'll just keep rolling. So group A, we have NRG, Vibrance, RBG, and Xset. Group B was version 1, Rebellion, G2, and Ghost. Very tough group. Group C, FaZe Clan, Space Station, Rogue, and Torrent. Again, tough group. Group D is Oxygen, Complexity, Sonics, and Team Envy. 
Now, this was a fairly balanced group, but this thing was like turned on its head. I think Group D was one that not many people predicted it to shake out in this manner. Let's look at the groups and how they unfolded. NRG goes a 3-0, no surprise. Vibrance with a 2-1. This is actually what I predicted. And then I had these two switched. I thought uh, Xset would make it in and not RBG. So a little surprising there, but good for RBG. They bring in Zanil. They have a really great first performance in this event. Group B, V1 and Shopify both have a really good group stage, and they're through to the next uh, the next round. They did have to play a tiebreaker game to figure out who was first seed and second seed, and we'll talk about that because that's the format uh, the format issue. And then we have G2 and Ghost who are tied up one to one, and then they had to play a tiebreaker as well. All right, and so here is we'll, we'll just go ahead and talk about this before we go any further in this groups stuff discussion. If we look at how this unfolded, we have G2 and Rebellion first round, Ghost and V1. Then we have G2, V1, Rebellion, Ghost. And then in round three, we have G2 playing against Ghost. And then we have V1 playing against Rebellion. I think a big part of why people were so upset at this format is because this was round three matchups. And then they had to turn around and play again. So if these matchups happened in round one, I think people still would have been a little bit skeptical of it. And they probably would have been vocal about not liking it, but not, se not as severely, in my opinion. Now, my take on it is... I understand that the tiebreakers may seem a little wonky from the outside. And I understand that it may not be like the most fluid way to approach these tournaments. But I do think this holds the most competitive integrity. You know, I was listening to a podcast with Rizzo and a few other pros. And some of them were talking about how when they're in a 1-2 tiebreaker here in the group stage, they would prefer that the team that moves forward is determined by things like game differential or head-to-head. -head. And I don't think those are bad methods of determining a team that should move forward, but I think a better method of determining what team should move forward is having them play. Having them play against each other. Because the reality is, G2 and Ghost had the same performance within their group. Yes, they lost to different teams. Yes, they beat different teams. But they had the same performance of a 1-2 and two record in, in series. So I actually really like the tiebreakers, and I know this unfolded in a really weird manner, really awkward manner, having these teams in round three turn around and again match up directly away or, or directly after um, in this tiebreaker matchup. And I think there's a little bit deeper discussion to be had about it as well, but that's kind of the gist, and that's that's my take on it. I think it's okay. I don't I don't really have too much of an issue with the tiebreakers. We'll look at Group C. We have FaZe Clan, Space Station, Rogue, and Torrent. And this one was a really exciting group, really spicy group, because we've got the new FaZe Squad with Sipical leaving Space Station, joining FaZe. We've got the new Space Station Squad with Daniel, the free agent, highly anticipated, 14 years old, just turned 15 in December. People were ready to watch him play at the highest level. We also have Rogue. Rogue is the team that first killer left in the offseason, and now Rogue also has a young phenom in Aqua. So really exciting group. Torrent, unlucky for them because this is a, this is a I mean, this is a very competitive group here. Uh, but this was fun to watch. FaZe go 3-0. They had a really, really tight game or series with Space Station that went to game five. Was very entertaining. And anyways, FaZe go 3-0 at the top of the group. And then we come over to group D and we got Oxygen at the top of the group. Hello. We got Envy at the bottom of the group. What? I, I imagine that no one or at least very few people were predicting this to unfold in this manner. This Envy squad is, I think people had high hopes for, or were at least, they were cheering for, is probably what I should say. There's a lot of Drees fans. There's a lot of people that don't like how Drees was dealt with in the, the, the offseason trade window, G2 stuff. Um, and of course, there's a lot of four-time Turbo fans. So a lot of a lot of Envy fans out there, and, and again, I, I think... I don't think many expected this team to be a team that would fall out of groups. Now, they may not be like a top one, top two, top three team, at least at the moment, but I don't think anyone expected this. So this was quite the surprise. Oxygen. You know, I, I am an Oxygen advocate, but I didn't expect this. 3-0, that's crazy. They came out and played incredibly. Props to Oxygen, grabbing that one seed, Complexity grabbing a two seed, and then Sonics with the three seed moving forward into the playoffs. So before we go much further, I do want to take a moment and I want to talk about this new wave of talent. I think originally we think new wave of talent. We think, all right, young kids that just turned 15, but that's not it. We also had some weird situations where like even beast mode, right? Beast mode's a free agent. Aqua's a free agent. Daniel's a free agent. 
We also have Parth. And I know Parth didn't garner as much attention as some of these names that I just mentioned, but Parth is a, a really high-level player as well. We have this new wave of talent finding its way into the RLCS scene in the winter split. And again, I understand that Beast Mode's not new, but he was not present in the fall split, and now he has been inserted into a new team in the winter split. We're just seeing a kind of a, a, a shakeup of kind of the top level of, uh, of teams and, and team composition in North America. And I actually think that it has made North America a little bit deeper, at least at the top end. North America has always been very top heavy. And many of the, the teams, you know, six and below don't really take games off the top three or four. But I think it's slowly starting to creep downwards a little bit. I think now at this point, I would say that we confidently have six, maybe even seven teams in North America that are pretty highly competitive. And I think 8, 9, and 10 are on the verge of becoming competitive. A lot of that is due to this insertion of this new wave of talent. So, you know, for example, Oxygen. Oxygen ends up grabbing Gimmick. And I know Gimmick is not a new wave of talent, but Gimmick kind of gets knocked to a team that's a little bit lower tier from V1 because Beast Mode ends up taking that spot. But now that has elevated Oxygen to, Oxygen to a new level. It's also elevated V1. There's just been this new wave and maybe new is not the correct word, but this wave of talent that has been thrusted into the North American scene. I am very excited to watch this winter split and see how it unfolds. I know we have a lot of people jumping to conclusions after this first event. And, you know, my sentiment to those people is going to be slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Let's see how this plays out over a long period of time. So with that being said, let's move into playoffs. We'll talk about that for just a moment here. Playoffs is a little bit different situation than normal. We, we have this hybrid bracket of like, it's double ELIM, but the only teams that are awarded with double elimination bracket is the top four seeds. Excuse me, NRG from group A, Oxygen from group D, version one from group B, and Phase from group C. Coming first in your group actually provides you with a massive benefit. You get an extra loss. We look down here at the lower, and these are the teams that qualified in the second, third, and uh, in the, se excuse me, second and third spots in their groups. So we got Rebellion, and RBG, Space Station, Sonics, Vibrance G2, Complexity, Rogue. Rebellion, absolutely just tearing through the tournament. They have, they have, been, uh, they have been playing very well. They played well in closed. They played well in groups. They almost topped their group. They ended up losing the tiebreaker to V1. And then they played really well here against RBG. Space Station ends up taking down Sonics fairly easily. Vibrance and G2 actually go to game five. And with the way G2 is performing, I'm not too surprised. Vibrance is a great team. And I think they can kind of punch up to some of these teams that are at that next level. And then we have Complexity and Rogue, which also went to game five. And I think Complexity played a little bit cleaner of a game. But Rogue was right there with them. And we go to lower round two. We got Rebellion getting 3 0 by Space Station. I don't think it's surprising. Uh, but it is sad to see after Rebellion performed so well at the rest of the event. But they ran into a hot Space Station. This Space Station team was looking really, really good. We look at their run through the lower bracket, and it's just super impressive. And then Complexity, just 3-0 sweep, or excuse me, um, G2, 3-0 sweep Complexity. So we move forward. V1 falls from upper semis to lowers. And then we have Oxygen getting 4 0 as well, falls to lower quarterfinals. Oxygen gets 4-1 by Space Station. Again, very hot team right uh, through the lower bracket right now. And then we got version 1 taking down G2 in game 7. This was a great series right here. Kind of went back and forth. Really enjoyed watching this. I think both version 1 and G2 are nowhere near their final form. Nowhere near it. I think the, both of these teams have a lot of room to grow. And I imagine that with more time and, and um, more practice and just better team chemistry and everything, I think both of these teams are going to be very, very solid. And then we move into lower semis. And we look at this. V1 and G2 fight until the end, right? And this is a G2 team that just swept complexity. Space Station just rolling through competition. 3-0 Rebellion. 4-1 Oxygen, 4-0 version 1. And then they don't stop there. They go through in 4-2 phase, who they had already lost to in groups. Space Station with Daniel is just, they are, it's a pleasure to watch. It's a pleasure to watch. And I don't know if you all have listened to the comms videos that Reynolds has released. If you have not, you need to. Very high energy, very excited. And this is something that we talked about a little bit in this offseason trade window. There are things that a player can bring to the team that does not show up on stat sheets. And I think sometimes that is more important than what you bring on stat sheets. 
And Space Station just felt like a team that was kind of stale. They felt like a team that, I don't know if complacent is the right word, but they just felt uninspired. And then with Sipical deciding to leave the team and join FaZe, we have a new opportunity with Daniel. And it seems as though he has brought a new fire to the Space Station team. Now, we want to talk one more time about this format. NRG makes it to the grand final, and they still have a loss to give, right? They came through with uppers. They haven't lost. They haven't lost. They haven't lost yet. So for Space Station to win this event, they would actually have to beat NRG two times, where NRG actually only has to win one time. So coming from the upper side, massive advantage in this format. It, it definitely plays out well to perform well in your groups, which I know... A lot of people, you know, you, you kind of brush this off. You're like, yeah, you know what? It's groups. I make it through to the next bracket. It doesn't really matter. But that's not true. You want to come through groups at the top because you want this extra life. You want this extra life. Anyways, we make it to this final. NRG plays very well against Space Station, a 4-2 scoreline. But in my opinion, Space Station got to take this as this is, a, this is a win. Okay? I know they didn't win the tournament, and that's not what I mean. But this is a dub for them. They come into this tournament. They get knocked around a little bit in groups, right? They, they get popped around a little bit in groups, end up losing to uh, FaZe. It was a good game, but they end up losing. And then they go to lowers where, uh, where look, when you're in lowers, there's just, it's just a new, it's a new level of pressure. When you're in groups, you know you play your three games, and you know that's you move forward, right? That's what it is. When you go to the lowers in the playoff bracket, you lose, your, you, you're, you're gone, right? That's a new level of pressure. And so we see a... A new team with a new player. Daniel, y'all remember, this is first RLCS event. And they go clapping through lowers. One, two, three, four, five. Five straight games of just smacking people left and right. This, this right here, I'm telling you, this is huge. This is big time for their mentality. This is big time for their confidence. And I think this is going to give them a lot of momentum rolling forward, even with a loss in the finals. So I'm super excited to see that Space Station squad continue to perform. The last thing, and certainly not least, maybe the most exciting, I want to talk about winter points. Winter points, okay? Let's look at winter points here because we do need to talk about this for just a moment. This is something that I've been confused about at times, and so I just want to mention it. Winter points for the winter major are the only thing that matters, okay? Fall points, fall major points are, are, are not what's going to qualify you into the winter major. Right? So your performance throughout this split is what will qualify you to the major. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be, right? So right now, after the regional number one, X Games Open, we've got NRG in first place, taking home 351 points. I'm going to look at Winter Regional 1 because total points actually adds in Winter Regional 2, which we have not seen yet. Now, the top eight teams are guaranteed at least 60 points because even if you finish last place in the regional, you will gain 60 points like Envy or Ghost, right? They were eliminated in groups. But we're going to ignore that for now, okay? We're going to ignore that for right now. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at just Winter Regional 1. And NRG is in the lead with 351 points. We got Space Station in second, 300. FaZe in third with 260. V1 in fourth with 220. And then we actually have... Oxygen in fifth with 190. So I, that's why I said I wanted to look at this column right here because this is what's actually going to determine our top five at the moment. But provided, provided, uh, this is only going to be, Oxygen is only going to hold this spot provided they qualify into the next event. We'll see how this plays out. I think right now we've got, I mean, one, we've got version one who's in a solid place, right? They're looking really, really good. I think they are going to continue to perform well throughout the winter split. I think Oxygen is probably not going to be able to hold, they're not probably, they're probably not going to be able to hold that spot. But I do expect them to continue to be competitive. I think if I, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit before. I think if I had to predict the winter major attendees, I think this is the five. I think this is the five. This may not be the order that things occur in throughout the rest of the split, but I think this is our five. NRG, Space Station Phase, V1, G2. Obviously, we could see complexity. I don't think it's impossible to see oxygen. Uh, I also think Envy could turn things around. And, and to be honest with you, I think Rogue, I think they can catch fire. I think Rogue's a team that deserves more respect than many of us are giving them. And I'm excited to see them try to earn that respect. So with that being said, that's going to conclude today's episode of the Break Check Podcast. I appreciate you all hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the show and we will catch you next time. Peace.